Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, I'd simply like to talk about Boris Johnson's interview and debate dodging and how, actually, to me, it sounds a little silly. But first, if you'd like to watch more of my videos, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Boris Johnson has, of course, been dodging all sorts of interviews as Prime Minister. He did in the run-up to his leadership election as well. Um, he's missing debates. The, the image from behind me is the climate debate on Channel 4 this uh, last night. And um, you can see, in the you may not notice them, I'll point them out to you, a couple of ice sculptures on either side uh, with the, the sort of part of the world map on it. Those are to replace the two invited party leaders that did not decide to attend, Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister. And at first sight, you could look at this and think, well, yeah, you can understand. Well, first of all, Nigel Farage, it's obvious why he wouldn't go along. Now, it's not like he'd be absolutely torn to shreds as such because they don't have any policies in the Brexit party anyway. But it would mean he'd have to at least sound like he knew anything at all about them. And that would be effort. So you can understand him not going along. Quite frankly, I don't even know why he was invited. But Boris Johnson has tried to set great store by the fact, oh, of course, he's got marvellous environmental policies. Whenever you ask them about them, he, I think there was one phrase when he was asked and he said, oh, yes, we're going to, you know, our, our policies are going to be absolutely transformative. And, and my initial reaction to that would have been, yeah, you see, that's the problem. It's the transformation of our environment that we're trying to stop, Boris. <laughs> we don't want the transformative. We want to keep it round about where it's at as far as possible because we can live in the environment as it is now. All right. It's a bit. There's some people who haven't been able to in some parts of the world. We're trying to prevent that transformation. So, yeah, I mean, but you can understand, you know, go along to this and he'll absolutely have a new arsehole torn to him. But as people have been pointing out, Jeremy Corbyn hasn't been afraid to go on it. And, you know, fair enough in that case, because although Labour have some real environmental policies, it has to be said, if you look around this room, they are weaker than those of the other parties um you know they're not there's not necessarily anything terrible about them but they are weaker and therefore you know he is now going to be the, the weaker party in that debate but it's actually really silly to avoid it and there's another interview um that's actually causing a bit of a row so andrew neil who is a political journalist for the bbc and also, you know, a senior Tory himself. I say a senior Tory, he's friends with senior Tories and he himself has, um, you know, some involvement in The Spectator, which for those who don't know is the filthiest of right-wing rags. Um, doesn't have a huge distribution, but it is extremely right-wing. It's where Boris Johnson worked and, and, you know, when he was at his journalistic worst. And... Um, and there was always a suggestion that he would be tough on Jeremy Corbyn and not so tough on Boris Johnson. And this is almost certain to be true. But nonetheless, he was still likely to ask some tough questions of Boris Johnson for the sake of his own reputation. And Boris Johnson hasn't fancied it. But Jeremy Corbyn went on there and delivered a terrible interview, an absolutely dreadful interview. But it was on the understanding that Boris Johnson was also going to be interviewed. Then lo and behold, Boris Johnson's not going to be interviewed. Labour are saying, actually, we were lied to then. Now, someone on Twitter did actually say today, what will probably happen is that um, Boris Johnson will eventually be interviewed by him, because why not? Um, and they're just using this at the moment to distract from other things, because it sort of worked in a way, because I'm not saying it's been headline news, but it has been occupying some of the news and uh, and potentially distracting Boris Johnson's opponents from the things they really should be attacking him for. But in general, he has certainly not been really attending press conferences, which he should. He should be delighted to answer questions. If he's got a great idea for the future of Britain, he should want to talk to it. When I have great ideas, I love talking to people about them. Love it. Why wouldn't he? He doesn't want to answer questions. I get that. Because in actual fact, it's all nonsense. I get that. But he's still foolish to not go along to them. Now, why is this? And it, like the title above, how to blag like a politician. Politicians throughout the ages have understood how to talk to people asking the toughest questions and not answer them. In fact, you could argue it's the basic toolkit of a politician, how not to answer a question. But Boris Johnson clearly just 
He's utterly inept as a politician. It should be dead easy. Like at the TV debate he had with just Jeremy Corbyn opposite him, there was a question he didn't answer there and lots of the other ones he just turned it into Brexit. And that's what he should do. He should just go along. He should be asked a question. Oh yes, Mr Johnson, why are you supporting fracking? That's an excellent question. I think what you... What you're really getting at is how are we going to be able to deal with this situation and what we need to do to deal with this situation is to get Brexit done because once we get Brexit done, then we'll have more time to address the really serious issues and, you know, conservation of our environment is the most serious of issues and we can only achieve it by getting Brexit done. You can turn literally any question into that any question at all he could have gone there and said get brexit done for every single answer because it doesn't and it's perfect and i do not understand why he didn't just go along and do that because the the calculation from the conservative strategists is there is some political damage by not going to these interviews not doing these debates but it's less than the political damage from going on them and saying something bloody stupid so the only conclusion you can draw from that when it's really easy to turn any difficult question into a get Brexit done answer, no matter how much, because the, the other party leaders will, of course, gang up on you and say you're not answering the question, things like that. That's fine. To the critically minded and people who are not Boris Johnson supporters, they weren't going to vote for him or his party anyway. All he's trying to do is appeal to his supporters. Well, his supporters will appeal, be appealed to it. They will. So there's only two things I can possibly think of that, that are in its favour. First of all, they don't trust Boris Johnson not to say something stupid. They don't trust him to stay on message against, let's face it, people who are better at debating than Jeremy Corbyn alone. And the second possibility, I suppose, would be that they don't want his supporters watching it and seeing some other arguments, because that's another possibility that maybe the supporters, if he's not going to be on it, just won't watch it and therefore maybe won't have some scales fall from their eyes when they hear other answers as well. But I think there was probably a much lower risk of that because those sort of people are set in their mind anyway. I just think they just didn't trust him, which basically means he isn't intelligent enough to be able to just give a single answer to whatever question is asked of him. That's a really interesting question and absolutely very important and very important we do something about it. But what I think you're really getting at is how can we make sure that our wonderful civil service have the time and resources necessary to enact policies needed to, to, to achieve this? And, and at the moment, they're so overwhelmed with Brexit. What we need to do is get Brexit done and then we free up this marvellous civil service to address all these issues. Thank you and good night. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details as well. And until next time, I'll see you later.